boom, hey internets, John Henry, Ani y'all, let's talk about it. I'm a huge fan of both of these dudes. Both of them are huge figures in entrepreneurship, but more importantly, they're both examples of creating your own version of the American dream. They both consistently give great advice for getting to your next level of entrepreneurship, but they talk about wealth and not only lifetime wealth, but what to do maybe with generational wealth. An entrepreneur by definition takes extraordinary financial risk. And I realized, oh, the opportunity cost of waiting is massive. Why not now? Shortly afterward, I quit my job to do it full time. I'm gonna start a mobile dry cleaning service. I said, you're gonna start a what? This was my lucky break. I took it to my father. He pressed those garments so masterfully. After that, law and order. Cool. Person of interest, white collar, amazing Spider-Man 2, unforgettable, the Nick. We dominated 90% of the film and the TV industry in New York City. Eventually it was enough, a larger competitor stepped in and made us an all cash offer to buy the business. Just like me, some of you might have seen John Henry in the Vice series Hustle. I thought it was a really well produced series where John just felt so relatable. In the early stages of growing a company, we bet on the jockey, not the racehorse. So I'd rather take a great entrepreneur with a mediocre idea than, you know the kind, that they have the greatest idea in the world, but like they're just not putting in the work. So we look for that sheer, relentless, sickening, gut-wrenching, obsessive style of hustle that we personally know that's what it takes to grow anything you know he's also on gary vaynerchuk's team for keynote speakers which i'm a huge fan of and he's partnered in a business with ani sanyal now ani in his own right super well accomplished entrepreneur also kolkata chaiko those trips to india as a kid that really taught us about unconditional love about extended family about kolkata about food those are some of my fondest memories to the point where it led to something like this because it just became such a big part of who we were. When I was 24 years old, I was diagnosed with kidney failure. Sure. From 20 to 24, uh, I was a recording artist, like I said, and I went on tour with Wiz Khalifa. I went on tour with Lupe Fiasco. I lived in Tokyo for two different stints. I, I lived in India, working on a Bollywood film for two months. I had done so much up until that point because I knew that I had this kidney condition. I know what it looks like to, to be like, oh, your life is on pause now, mm -hmm. and you don't know what happens next. I know what it's like to be like, I don't know if I'm going to make it out of this. Mm -hmm. um, and when I think about those things, for me, it's very black and white. It's like you have to move forward at all times. Mm -hmm. You know, there's like lateral movement in the life of an entrepreneur or life of a creative person is like a death sentence. 100%. You know, it's like the, the importance of progressing, even if it's snail paced, right. is so important. Um, and, and I think for me, like, having gone up against, like, a life-threatening situation, I knew that, like, look, if I could walk today, that's a win. Mm -hmm. you know, like, I spent my 25th birthday learning how to walk. Wow. You know, and, like, to me, like, I could have let that be this huge thing, like, damn, I'm depressed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was like, nah, I made steps today. Like, right. this, was, this was big. And, and so that's, that's my attitude. And it's kind of a cheat code, right, because it's like I don't have fear. Or, like, I don't right. have, like, a lot of the typical doubts that people go through right because i'm like well i you know right I'll beat death once like we'll be okay and he's also known for having started the idea exchange which was a network it was meetings where entrepreneurs can meet share ideas sensibility energy and overall support a little while ago they launched a brand called equity apparel so they have a crew and i believe that's an embroidery finish might be screen printed and it looks like they have a dad hat and so I just thought this was a good jumping off point and take it on as a capsule and show you guys my process. Now, getting into the design, of course I jumped on their website equityapparel.com where I found sort of their thesis there and I love that they're really pushing ownership focused lifestyle so they want that they want premium there's also a big drive there for this to be made in the united states i 
started with apparel graphics as I would many times. So just some logo play, of course. I put some vectors on the page with equity apparel and just trying it with different typography, different fonts, and keeping in mind that I wanted things to be very classic. In the end of my brainstorm, I really wanted to sort of do a remix on what they already have with equity. I wanted to do a cursive. I put the E together differently with this font and just kind of change some nuances of the outlines of what was, you know, another typography. So I just changed the E and some of the edges on this typography so I could make sure that it was clean and classic. And I'm always creating the word mark so that it can be used in a couple different ways, uh, not just screen printing, right? You have to think of embossing and embroidery. So that first script font I felt was pretty strong. After that, I went for a really clean, sleek, and modern, almost sharp. Uh, but I just wanted a classic font. Uh, with equity, we want to talk about fortune. We want to talk about heritage. You think of uh, multi-million dollar companies that just have a huge history. Once I got those word marks together and I felt pretty solid about that, I started going and veering off into making some of the first apparel graphics. Now, I know I want to use premium and lifestyle in one of the shields or configurations. And so just kind of flowing off of that, I made this one very easily with the script font and nothing specific here. All of the beginning apparel graphics need to have identity, but they need to be versatile. Moving on, I definitely knew early I wanted to use some sort of graphic that was worldwide that denoted it can be an international company. So I just took this globe, cut it in half, and I used an italicized equity that felt kind of sharp. Again, wanted to be simple, but have something iconic that you can understand at a glance. On another look, I think I was inspired by some really vintage Levi's. But when you think of like Levi's denim company, you just think American heritage. So I want to create almost like a label flasher that could hang on a pair of denim, just 12 ounce raw denim or something in that neighborhood. And so uh, with the wordplay, I just want to sculpt the letters, but in the end, I want it to be almost like a banner. So I wanted company in there in the CO dot. And I definitely wanted to say made in the United States. A lot of companies will push domestic made. I I just thought I'd put it out there fully just so that it can be sort of a staple of an American made product. Okay, so what usually happens is when you get into a flow of putting a capsule together, ideas just start to bounce. And so at some point I got a vision of doing an E logo and using that. And I was straying away from it in the beginning because there's so many companies that kind of have a stylized E. But a vision came to me of using three different bars. And as I started putting together the different looks, for this on the vector page. Eventually I kind of came up with more of a script, maybe like a Japanese paintbrush style of three stripes. And I felt like this could really be strong. So I really liked it so much. I just developed it a little bit more. I kind of flanked it with the Los Angeles and New York there. I did sort of an inverse with it and brought that modern equity word mark alongside it and just kind of stacked it together just so I could kind of see what all of that looks like. Having put a solid grouping of apparel graphics together, I ran off to go ahead and start the label package. I like doing label packages, especially for a startup because it's important that you do something that can last several seasons, right? Because if you do production on these, they're not gonna make 50 of them. They're gonna make like a thousand of them. So for the woven base of the labels, I like to use black and white. Red is a very classic color. And so I kind of threw that into the trim. And of course, since t-shirts are gonna be part of the first collection, I wanted to do a PL, which stands for a printed neck label. So when you're doing custom garments, you wanna make sure you pull the labels of the blanks and have your own in there. So I took my template from CBA and used that, put together a solid graphic with sizing and then the, the wash icons and a little plug for equityapparel.com. Knowing the following for both of these guys, of course, I have to do a snapback. It's like an essential. So again, I grabbed a template from CBA. So I decided to use the three stripe logo on the front crown of this snapback. And then I just want to add a flat direct embroidery on the side of the crown, the little American flag. So the vibe of both will kind of go together, the stripes, but just something clean and easy. And then just a quick back hit of the modern font that says equity on the back. 
And then you know I had to do a dad hat. I just feel like something that either of them might wear. In any case, their customer base definitely gonna rock an unstructured cap. So again, I grabbed a template from CBA. So I took the vector structures from that tech pack and started applying my graphics because the bodies of them were already made. Added the label. Again, same hit on the side with the EQ flag. And this time I want to use the globe logo on the front and I think this in a really good quality embroidery would do very well I'd have to see this one finished also in the back we finished with equity logo again on the background at the very top but went with kind of a slimmer profile for the font just because I feel like that was in tow for the vibe on this hat so I know I put it together fast because we edited it all, but this is several weeks of work in between my regular contracted work, consulting, and this YouTube channel. But it was really fun for me to do. I'm a big fan of John and Ani. I respect you guys tremendously and all the stuff you've already done with your career. And so without further ado, you guys, here's how the capsule ended up that I did for Equity Apparel. If you guys want to see the full layout of all these visuals, go to johnfinom.co forward slash equity. If you need some tools to up your game with your clothing line, go to clothingbrandacademy.com. Follow me on social media when you get a chance. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.